Uh, I got it up here. Come on, you did good while I got it. Don't be ashamed, we're just all family. Mom.
I tried all morning to sing different songs. But none of them would come out. Not even halfway. And Louisa's song, her favorite one, came out. So that's what I'm going to try. Just pray for me.
Now this song is for somebody very, very special in my life.
St. Charles? Oh, what's the man preaching? Yep, if you got a song, you can sing. Oh, sir, come on. church today. We think this is just talking to the churches in those days. No, it's talking to the church today too. And I want to start with chapter 3 here. Chapter 3 and verse 1, he says, And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. He says, And the seven stars, I know thy works. Somebody mentioned the works a while ago or, or God knows all that we do. God knows everything that we say and do in this world, friends. <clears throat> Whether we be Christian or sinner, He knows it. <coughs> God says, And I know thy works, that thou hast a name that, that thou liveth and are dead. See, there's a whole lot thinks that they're living today, but they're still dead in their sins. Right. And I'm talking to the church. Right. We, we thank Brother Charles because we come through a church house door and sit in a church house pew and get up and sing songs and things. Uh, we are walking right with God. We're not walking right with God until we get on our knees and can say a sinner's prayer, get forgiveness for our sins, but that blood, shed blood that Jesus shed on the cross for us. We have to have our sins forgiven, Charles. I don't care who we are, if we're a preacher, we're a teacher, or who we are, we have to have them sins under control. Amen. And that control is the blood of Christ. Amen. Now, he, he says, be watchful. I won't stop right there just a minute, and I want to tell you what I'm watching for. I'm watching for that man called Jesus to come back. That's what I'm watching for. I'm not watching for anything else in this world except Jesus is coming. Because you know why? Because he told me to watch. Watch and pray. Well, what was he telling me to watch for? He was telling me, Brother Rusty, to watch for His coming. He said, because you don't know when I'm coming, I'll come on you as a thief in the night. Uh -huh. So watch for the coming of Jesus Christ, friends, and not the things of this world. The things of this world can't take me to heaven. But that man that died on the cross of Calvary can and if I'll just watch and do and, and be a good servant of His, Brother Charles. He, say, he says, uh, uh, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Now examine yourself right now. What remains in here? What do you have in here that if you die this moment, you'll go to heaven and not to hell? What do you have in here? Examine yourself. I, I examine myself every day. Well, you're a preacher and you do. Yes, I do, Brother Charles, because mouth sometimes can speak, Brother Rusty, before brain can kick in and think. So therefore, I have to ask God every night before I go to bed, Lord, if I've said or done anything displeasing to you, I ask your forgiveness. 
And every morning when I get up, well, how can you say something in your sleep? I still do it. I still ask the Lord's forgiveness. I still thank Him, thank Him though for letting me have that night's rest and getting up the next morning because He didn't have to let me. I could have laid there and died in my sleep, Brother Charles. And listen, He, say, he says, uh, Be watchful, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Who's ready to die, friends? I am at any moment. God can take me out of this world. You can die. Where would you be? Where would I be without the Lord? He says, For I have not found thy works perfect before God. He's talking to me, Brother Rusty. He's talking to everybody today, friend. You might say, well, he's not talking to me. Yes, he's talking to you. Yes. Yes. He's talking to everybody. Yes. Is my works perfect? I tell you, I'm trying real hard, Brother Rusty, to make my works perfect with the Lord and satisfactory to Him because I don't want to go to hell. And I could die at any minute. Sometimes we go through this world, well, I'm just going to live forever. No, you're not. Your, your days are numbered. Mine is. He says in verse 3, he says, Remember, therefore how thou hast received it and hear. How have you received and hear the Word of God? Think about it, friends. How have you received and hear the Word of God? Now listen, I was brought up, friends, and I believe some things that when I got in the Word of God, I had to, I, Brother Charles, I had to make a bad face and go in another direction because it wasn't right. Right. But today we just want to hold on to those things. Hold on to them. Hold on to them and preach them and teach them and tell people about them. Well, listen, that's a blind leader leading the blind, Brother Charles. And if that leader falls into the ditch or goes to hell, everybody's falling to going to hell. God's displeased with, with the church today as he was as he was displeased with the church in those days that, that uh, John visited them in these scriptures. Or Jesus was talking about them. Jesus was telling John what to write to the church. But the church don't even know how to read it and receive it today. And when I say the church, I'm talking about every individual. I'm not talking about a church building. We are the church. Not this church building. It says, remember in verse 3, therefore how I received and heard and hold fast and repent. You can hold fast to the church or to the truth, to the Word of God, but still repent, ask for repentance every day of our lives. Amen. Yes. Don't walk around like I'm better than you. No, I'm no better than anybody. I'm no better than that whore that walks a road. That drunkard, that pill popper, that whoremonger. I'm not, listen, God loves them just as much as He loves me. I'm just walking different from them. Amen. Wake up, church. It's time to wake up and get in that straight path, brother uh, uh, Charles. Because if I don't stay in that right path, friends, guess what? I'm in the wrong path. And I'm going to hell. I don't care how much I preach, how much I teach, how much I sing, and how much I say, yeah, I know Jesus. How many times I say, yeah, I went to church this morning, or last night, or yesterday. It don't make, it don't make one bit of difference. I can still go to hell. And listen, I always say if I go to hell, Brother Charles, it's my fault. If you go to hell, it's your fault. How many of you 
in here know how to read. Read the Word of God and know it for yourself. Don't let a pastor or a preacher stand behind a pulpit and preach to you and, and tell you things because he may preach you a lie. Amen. Listen to what he says in verse 3, the last part of it. He says, I will come as a thief, as a thief, and I shall not know what hour I will come upon thee. Friends, we can die any minute. Any minute we can die. That's right. Jesus is coming after you. If I die right now, Brother Rusty, and the rest of you walk out of this church, guess what? Jesus has come after me. Where am I going? Where am I going? That's where I have to examine myself. Verse 4, he says, I have a few names, even the inside of which have not defiled their garments. Now listen, there's a few in the church's friends that don't defile their garments. Amen. Right? That's what he just said, Jerry. He told this church here, he says, there's a few in there that haven't defiled their garments yet. But listen, friends, that, that's why I said a while ago, some comes to church just to be a coming. Huh? They don't come to church to hear the Word of God and, and, and to get in and to worship with one another. And to, listen, when we come through that door, we should come through that door in one mind, one accord, lifting Jesus Christ up, lifting God up, and that way each and every one of us will be lifted up. First of all, the, uh, God and Jesus Christ is the first things I want to lift up. Because you can't take me to heaven. He goes on in verse 4 and he says, And they shall walk with me in white. In verse 4 there, uh, uh, where it says, Thou hast a few names even in Sardis. That church there it says, Which have not the fire of their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Amen. Each and every one of us, friends, know whether or not we're worthy right. to walk in that white garment there. And that garment is that spiritual garment. Yes. There's a whole lot of people today, Brother Charles, has climbed up that back way and entered into the church that they call it. Yeah. No, that don't work. I've got to go through Jesus Christ to even come into the church. Oh, Can't do it no other way. I can't do it in, uh, uh, through Brother Charles or, or Rusty or Gilbert or anybody else. I have to go through Jesus Christ. And going through Him is asking for that forgiveness. Brother Rusty, get my sins covered by that blood, that shed blood, that shed for me on Calvary's cross. Amen. Yes. There's no other way. Jesus, our, our is told me in verse 5 here, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not, I will not blot out His name out of the book of life, but I will confess His name before the Father and before the angels of heaven. Yes. Do you know where you're going today, friends? You're the only one. I don't know, but I know a man that does, and that's God. He knows where each and every one of us are going. Before we even get there, Brother Rusty, He knows. And friends, we have to we have to know in our hearts today that we're walking worthy of that man, Jesus Christ. I have to know. Like I've said before, I may hide something from you. But I can't hide it from God. Then he said in verse 6, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit
Spirit saith to the churches, the churches, the churches today too, brother. It's not just the churches of that day and time, but it's the churches today. Listen what the Spirit is saying to us. He says, And unto the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man opens. No man can open. You know that art, friends, let me tell you something here. When Jesus Christ comes back, it's going to be too late. It's going to be like that door on the ark, brother. When God shut it, nobody could open it. And nobody can, could shut it. Nobody on the outside could get in. And nobody on the inside could get out. That's the same way it is when we walk into that other world, friends. It's called heaven. Are you going to be part of it? Am I going to be part of it? I'm the only one that knows whether or not I'm a walking uh, uh, faithful with Jesus Christ and know what road I'm a walking on. To know whether or not I'm going to inherit part of that world, part of that heaven it's called. And you, you are the only one that knows where you're going. He says in verse 8, he says, I know thy work. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast the key, or, 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 or hast kept thy word, and hast not denied my name. See, you're, you're the only one that has that key to that open door, friends. That door is open. That door is open. And you have the key to pass through that door. And that door is Jesus Christ. When I come somewhere, it don't matter where it's at, Brother Charles, to alter, to repent. That door is open all the time. And there's not a man on earth can shut that door. But Jesus can. Jesus can turn us over to a reprobated mind. It's too late then, Brother Charles, to call upon God because guess what? He don't hear us. When that happens, He don't hear us. He says in verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogues of Satan. In other words, they're gone. I don't want no, no more to do with them. They're gone. He says, Which say they are Jews and are not but lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. God can do anything, friends. Yes. And let me tell you a little something about that verse there. When He says, I can make them come and worship before thy feet. Let me tell you, when that man Jesus Christ comes back, every knee's going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Yes. Brother Charles, that He is Lord. But it may be too late. It may be too late. Now's the time. This minute's the time. The time is, is when we're alive, friends, not when we die. It'll be too late. He said, Because in verse 10, Thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. Not just one, but all the world. 
to try them that dwell upon the earth. That day is coming, friends. Are you ready to accept what's coming? Because what's coming is Jesus Christ. He says in the next verse, He says, Behold, I come quickly. And hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. See, when, when you read that verse 10 there, he says, Because thou hast kept, uh, my, kept the word my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And then he says, Behold, I come quickly. Are you ready for His coming? Because He's coming, friends. And when He comes back, that's it. It's either I'm going to wake up in heaven or hell. Are you ready for His coming? Are you watching for His coming? Because He's coming. And no man can stop His coming. When God says, Son, go bring my people home, it's going to be too late to say, Lord, forgive me. Because within a twinkling of an eye, it's going to be over. And the last trump, it's going to be over. Are you ready? He says, in verse 7, he said, uh, or 12, he says, Him that overcometh, I will make a pillow in the temple of God, and he shall go no more out. Do you want to be a, a pillar in the temple of God? Yes. You can today, friends. Yes. And not only that temple, a uh, brother that comes down out of heaven, uh, uh, brother Charles, but you can be a temple and a, a pillar in the temple of God now. But I tell you. You can make Jesus Christ that pillar in this temple. Right. I want to be, I want that man Jesus to be that pillar here. Oh, and that leader and that teacher and that guide and that Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit to lead me, teach me, and guide me. Knowing that Jesus Christ and the Father is here. You know, Jesus tells me, He says, the kingdom of heaven is here. Are we ready to accept it? And go on and say, thank you God for living with me today. Walking with me in your Holy Spirit, my leader, my teacher, and my guide. Friends, He's coming back. Yes. He's coming back and, and, and it's probably quicker than we think. Amen. Because there's too much in the world that's fulfilling the Scripture. He says, but, but the pillar and the temple of God and He shall go no more in that. He says, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him my new name. I'm ready for all of that, ain't you? Yes, amen. He says in the next verse, verse 13, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Do you hear what He's saying to you today? That's who He's talking about. He's talking to me. He's talking to you individually. Because we are the church. That name over the door don't mean anything. That name over the door can take me to hell. But I know a name 
that will take me all the way through to where God's at. No man's going to see God except through and by Jesus Christ. Amen. He says in verse 14, And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, he says, Write these things, saith the man, saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He says, I know thy works that thy are neither hot nor cold. I would thy was were cold or hot. I don't want you to be uh, really sitting on the straddle of the fence. One leg and arm in the world and one leg and arm in trying to reach into the kingdom of God. You can't do it. Yeah. I have to get both. All body, soul, mind, strength, and everything into the kingdom of God to make it to hell. If I don't, guess what? I'm going to hell. Can't do it. He said in verse 16, So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew or spit thee out of my mouth. Don't want anything to do with you. Bet you got a whole lot of them today. They can't accept the Word. You know why? Well, Jesus told them it's like a two-edged sword. That's why they don't want to accept it. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts going and coming. Yes. They'll believe a lie, be damned, and go to hell before they believe the truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. It's not what our Valentine says. He says in verse 17, Because I said, I am rich and and increased in goods and have need of nothing. Uh oh, need of nothing. They have everything. Ain't they kind of like the rich man Jesus told about when he was telling about it. You know, build his barns big and everything, stored everything he had in there. But that night his soul was required of him by God. Yes. God took him out. Yes. See, the worldly things can't save us, friends. But I know that man Jesus Christ and he can. Yes, amen. They have need of nothing here in verse 17. And know not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You're all of that. But if I'm all of that, I don't want to be rich. All the thing I want to be rich on is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. My Savior, because I know one day, Brother Rusty, I'm going to have all that I need. Amen. Not going to need anything else. I'm not even going to be sick. Huh? Right. Praise God, I ain't going to have to have these glasses. I'm not going to have this limp that I've got. Oh, I'm going to be whole. Amen. Yes. Can't wait for that day. He said in verse 18, I can't leave to buy of me gold tread, uh, tread and, and the fire that thou might be rich and white raiment. Uh-oh. That's, that's the gold I want. And the riches I want there, brothers, that white garment. <laughs> he says that thou mightest be clothed that thy shame of the nakedness do not appear and uh, anoint thine eyes with I say. I wonder what kind of I say that is, Brother Charles. Huh? The Word of God. That's the I say that He's 
talking about here. Anointed with the Word of God. Yeah. Other words, just don't sit out there and listen to a man up here preaching or teaching or in, in any church building, but have that Word laying right before you and you will know whether or not He gets out of that Word. If he's led by the Holy Spirit and guided by the Holy Spirit and he knows the Word of God, and if he's guided by the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit, brother, he's going to know the Word of God. Listen, this Word is food. I think me and Charles was talking the other day. And, and, and I believe I asked, what's the most important thing in a church? But see, I have to, I, I'll tell it later. He says, but the Word of God. Yes, it's the Word of God. We need to, to be fed up, nourished up on the Word of God. Yeah. But singing don't go out either. Because you know what? And, and it's the first time, and I've been reading it, Brother Charles, for years. But I run into, ran into a little verse the other day that said, after Jesus Christ and the twelve disciples finished with their lunch, their dinner there that night, that they sang hymns. Yes, they did. And they did. They sang. Talks about I say where he says that I might see. You know, we can see it. We get into that word of God and we, we start reading it. And I've always said this, Brother Charles, I'll say it till I die. It's like taking a child that, that's fixing to enter into school. When that child enters into school and it starts studying. The teacher starts teaching it. It starts learning. Guess what? It starts growing, don't it? And it passes from grade to grade to grade. That's the way we are in that. Right. The more we study it, the more we pray about it, the more we let the Holy Spirit lead us, teach us, and guide us, the more we'll know to what it's talking about. Amen. Yeah. Well, guess what? I know it's talking to me, sister. Is it talking to all of you? It's talking to me. He said in verse 19, he says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. So he's telling me to repent. Of, of what? Of what? So I can hear a lot of people say, well, what? Brother, I can't repent enough. Because like he was teaching this morning, Jesus Christ went through for more for me than I could ever pay. So keep repenting. Don't be ashamed. Don't say, well, I'm a Christian. I've already repented once. Repent again and talk to God because God wants us to talk to Him. God wants us to hear Him. See, that's what that's, that's a lot of the Christian people's problem today. Well, I repented once. I don't need to repent again. Yeah. I repent every morning when I get up, whether I've done anything or not. I repent every night before I go to bed whether I've done anything or not. And guess what? God hears me. And God forgives me if I've said or done anything wrong. Right. But now I can't go back and, 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 and I can't go and do something today and ask forgiveness for it. Do the same thing tomorrow and ask forgiveness for it. Guess what? God's going to get tired. God's going to reprimand me after a while and 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 uh, maybe turn me over to a reprobate man. Yep. I can't do that. Well, they call them hypocrites. Yeah. 
That's what Jesus called them, wasn't it? But today you call a person a hypocrite and they might want to take you to court. Yeah. Well, so be it. He called me a hypocrite. Yeah. Huh? Well, the shoot be Buddy, I'd hate to see a whole lot of churches today of Jesus Christ come walking through. He ain't going to do it. But I say if He come walking through the door. I mean, I wonder how many of them would take tail and run. If they knew for sure it was Jesus. Like old Paul did on the way to Damascus. He didn't run. Jesus blinded him. Jesus might. I don't know what he would do. But when he comes back, Charles, that's going to be all of it. Now he says in verse 21 here, he says to him that overcometh I will grant to sit with me in the throne, even as I also overcome and am set down with my Father in His throne. Wouldn't that be nice to sit right down beside of Jesus Christ at His throne, Brother Charles, and, and, and just sit there and talk with Him? Yeah. Amen. And that would be a beautiful time, a minute, to sit there yeah. and talk with Him. But listen to what he tells me. Hard, he that hath the ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Yeah. And then friends, this has been on my heart and mind for two or three weeks. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit dealing with me, bro Brother Charles, is this Scripture and the next Scripture. Do you know the next Scripture gives me a a, 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 a look at God's throne and, and, and around God's throne. Uh, what's there? Who's there? But friends, you and I could die at any minute and the Bible says to be absent in this body is to be what? Huh? Present with God or with the Lord. The Lord who? Jesus Christ. Because without Christ, you ain't going to see God. But with Christ, the Bible tells me I'll see God. But it's for right now, God is love in my heart. For all mankind. I don't care who it is, Brother Charles. For all mankind. If you're a Christian you say I'm a Christian, you love everybody. But let me tell you something. The wrongful, I have to love the people that do wrong. But I don't have to love the wrong. Don't uphold it. Anybody have anything to say, Brother Charles? Anybody is? Testimony. I'd like to thank God for being here and uh, having a home church. Yeah. Thank God for my daughter and her friend. Amen. And uh, we'll try to bring more in. More to just give us more strength. God will. God will bring them in. God, God's got His time. See, my time ain't God's time, is it? I thank the Lord for Renata and your daughter and her Marvin, Brother Marvin. Glad they're coming. And Charles, yeah, Charles, and I'm glad to have y'all back. And this young man and his mother and man, there's a bunch and her, her brother back there. What do you want?
Lord, Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. We thank you for this wonderful congregation that we've had today. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful message that we've brought here today. And Father God, we ask that you bless each and every one that is here with us. And Father God, we ask that you go with them on their journey home. Protect them and guide them. And Lord, we ask that you bring them back at the appointed time. And this we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.